question eight. It's kind of on these two pages here. It says, based on your completed two-way table, estimate the following probabilities as a fraction, okay, as a fraction, and also as a decimal rounded to three decimal places. Note, these probability are, probabilities are found in the rows and columns of the table. They're called conditional probabilities, and I'll explain that. Um, right, I'm, I'll talk about something very specific there. So in part A, it says, let's do A first. A randomly selected student has asthma. Now, that's our condition. That's it. This is the condition. I'll, I'll highlight that in green. They have asthma. What is the probability that the student has at least one household member who smokes? Okay, let's go up. So here, when you have a table and you're given a condition, that's going to restrict you to a row. The condition asthma restricts us to the first row. row and there's only 120 people in that row that has one, at least one household member who smokes. So it's 120 out of the condition, which is this row right here, or a total of 193 students. So in other words, there's 193 who have asthma. Out of that 193, there are 120 who smoke, right? We'll clear it off. So that condition restricts us to that row right there, and that's 120 over 193. Let's see what that percent is. I'm going to do that on calculator right now. 120 divided by 193. Okay, about 62%. So that's the conditional probability, not 63, Sean, 62%. Okay, now here I'm just saying that this type of probability is referred to as a conditional probability. We could name the condition that the student has asthma. You would say, now this is just to, to recognize that often when you're dealing with formal conditional probability, you say stuff like this. Given that the student has asthma, what is the probability that the student has at least one household member who smokes? But maybe you might not see it so formally. You might see it like, like it says up here. Um, and I, I wanted you to see it both ways. That's why these questions are so long. I'm just showing you in two perspectives what they all mean. Let's go to B. Now we have a different one. We have selected student does not have asthma. That's our condition. What is the probability the student has at least one household member who smokes? So now we just move to our second row. The condition's here. The student does not have asthma. So we look at this row in total. And that gives us all the information we need. So now it's out of 807, 301 um, have at least one household member, member who smokes. So we can write this down. So we get 301 out of 807. And as a decimal, ooh, I said as a decimal to three places. Ooh, shame on me. Let's go back to the other one. So that's about 62.176%. That's three decimal places. And here, it, you know what? That's wrong. I said as a decimal, I wrote this, as a decimal rounded to three decimal places. Sean, come on. That means you don't write as a percent rounded to three places. We take the decimal around that to three places as 0 0.622. And that is equal to 62.2%. The answer I'm looking for is here, though. I didn't even ask for a percent, but I'll leave that there. 301, divide, the next problem, divided by 807. That is 373, which is about, which is equal to, excuse me, 37.3%. I didn't ask for a percent here, but I wanted to show that. What's our next one? They have a different condition. What's the condition now? They have at least one. So now we're given a column condition. They have at least one household member who smokes. What is the probability the student has asthma? So look how this is different. Instead of being restricted to a row, we're restricted to a column because this is a column heading. At least one household member smokes. So we're dealing with this column right here. You see that? We're dealing with the column. So in that column, there are 421 people, and 120 of those 421 have asthma. So let's go write that down. So we get 120 out of 421. And let's round here. 120 divided by 421, 0.285, which is about 0.285, which is 28.5%. And then, okay. Part D, why might it make sense that C and D are very 
A and C, excuse me, are very different. Do you think that whether or not a student has asthma is related to whether or not this student has at least one family member who smokes? Explain your answer. Okay, so we got, um, here's A up here, C down there. Let's clear some of this off. All right, so basically they're reverses of each other. In the first one, uh, the condition is that we have asthma. And then based on that condition, what's the probability that they have a smoker? It's about 62.2%. If we reverse that and we say, well, given that we have one member who smokes, what's the probability they have asthma? It's not the same, right? It's 28.5%. Why might these be different? You don't have to write an essay to, do it, to answer this, essentially. You could just look and say, well, the students who have asthma are only 193. But the, the amount of households that have smokers is 421. So you can say we're dealing with different numbers of households. You can say something as simple as that. You can say 193 students have asthma, but a total of 421 households have at least one smoker. So we're not dealing with the same group, essentially. There are different groups here. So we might expect to get different probabilities. That is something you could say. You might have a better way of answering it. Please let me know if you do. And the second piece, um, do you think that whether or not a student has asthma is related to whether or not the student has at least one band member who smokes? Um, okay, so if it's related, I, I would say yes, because if we look at A right here, we can see that if they have asthma, it's highly likely that they also have a household member who smokes. The reverse might not be true, that you have at least one household member who smokes that you have a high chance of having someone who has asthma, but that might just be because maybe a lot of people are resistant to asthma. If cigarette smoke is the cause or it exacerbates or influences asthma, they might be resistant to that or, so, or something along those lines. Now, um, I'm not gonna write anything down here, but I'm just gonna say that when you're answering a question like this, um, if you believe there is a strong connection, let's say it's a test or something, uh, you just say why using the numbers that you have, that you're given, and stick with that. And if you don't think it's the case, also use the numbers to explain why. Always use the numbers when you're explaining, especially on a math test, and especially since this was written for the regents exam. All right, thanks.